right. We're back with more ink. Back to bamboo land. <sighs> Gonna make a stock here. Maybe I should make the light colored leaves. So I've, I've prepped three, three stalks that I'm now going to fill with leaves. I'm letting these dry as I did before to avoid the problem I'm showing you here. Where the stalk is wet and you draw the leaves on top of it while it's wet. You get bleeding through there because the paper was already wet, and I don't like the effect. You can see it here too. Super sloppy compared to the rest of it. So I'm gonna. I've been prepping stalks first, letting them dry, and then coming back and doing the leaves. At least that's what I'm trying now. This one looks like it's the wettest. Ooh. Yeah, it's totally damp. Well, well, that one's gonna have to wait a little while then. Let's start with this one. This one's pretty dry. Did this one about half an hour ago. All right, we're gonna try a cascade. The cascade effect. I'm thinking. Cascade. Sorry, adjusting my my newspapers. We'll do the cascade here somehow. Some kind of cascading effect here. I'm not entirely sure yet. Where should this go? I don't know. Leaves pointing down are very, very tough for me. I really haven't figured out sort of how they work. Rather, I'll talk while I grind. Um, I've been able to make it work before, but not consistently. And I can like, I can make one clump, one leaf clump, that's uh, That looks okay, but basically if I try to do a cascading multi-clump effect, I'll show you the horrific results. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Ah! It's bamboo. It's supposed to be tranquil. But my main mode is chaotic and tense, so... Controlled and tranquil is kind of like probably the most difficult thing for me to pull off. <laughs> but you know, that's why bamboo is so good to, to draw, because there's, really, there's no wiggle room. There's nowhere to hide. You can't hide behind maximalism. Just like throw more paint at the problem. As they say. What kind of leaves are we going to make today? Hopefully pretty ones. I have some videos queued up. The way I learn from videos is I watch which strokes they do in which order. And I try to get a feel, like try to imprint on my mind how different sections of it look like the sections that I have trouble with. How do those sections look? How do the different pieces relate to each other? And what am I not what am I not getting? Like which part because it's it's like I'm definitely getting some things somewhat bamboo like and then other things are not right. And it's like I have to figure out it can be 
more complicated than I would have thought, at least, to figure out where the problem is. Like, where's the problem in this one? Just looks bad. <laughs> Just looks bad! Didn't mess it up yet. I know that's not the best way to think about it. I've been thinking about performance anxiety and the different kinds of things that can give you performance anxiety. And once I started thinking about it, that I developed performance anxiety relating to painting. I don't have any performance anxiety, You almost never, when it comes to public speaking, just because I've been doing it for a really long time, and I have a lot of strategies developed. I can think on my feet really fast, and make words, and it's just something that I feel comfortable doing. I don't really even have to think about it too hard. So, but painting, I, I, I do have to think about art. And as I mentioned in another video, I don't want to think hard about it. I just want it to come naturally. One thing that I've noticed is if you follow, for leaves that turn up, follow the direction of the branch, right? So this is the branch, this little branchlet. Follow the direction. And as one of my YouTube teachers pointed out, you're very stubborn. You always go in a straight line. <laughs> I love that way of talking about it. It's like I want to put something below here, but I, I know that's not right. This paper is very unforgiving. It can produce incredibly beautiful, subtle results. Like if you look here, beautiful, subtle results right in here. So pretty, feathery. And it somehow absorbs a lot of liquid, like more than printer paper, which is what I was practicing on. But yet, it's also really easy to make it bleed and have way too much liquid. So it's kind of, you know, I find it uh, tricky in that regard. Very tricky. Okay, which way do you want to go? We're just going to keep going the same direction. So the way I think about it is there's forces. There are multiple forces that act on bamboo, right? Normally, bamboo would grow toward the light, right? And it would follow the direction. Because bamboo, like other plants, has... The leaves have structure, right? And so, like, if they didn't have any structure, they would be all completely floppy. But when they're, like, filled with water and they're nice and healthy, you know, they stand up, right? They stand up. At a certain point, they'll flop. The center of gravity of the leaf is here, in the flopping, in the flopping point. This leaf, you know, I think about what each leaf would look like if it hadn't flopped, right? And also, plants grow. So, if these plants are flopping in this direction, these plants can't, these ones, it would look kind of odd if they were just like, oh, I'm not, 
I'm like flying over in this direction. Like, how would, how, how would that happen? So there's gravity that acts on it. There's the plant that pushes it up. You know, it wants to grow toward the sun. And there's also weather, right? So there's like, say there's wind, right? The wind is blowing. So all the leaves should kind of be going this way, for example. Another element that affects leaf placement and branch placement more is this sort of like counterbalance element, right? So it's kind of like a mobile, right? This is like, imagine there's a string here, right? And you pu you, you're holding the string and different things are hanging off of it like that. you can see, like that. And they hang from, say, an invisible point here, around here. And these things, they balance each other out on the actual plants, right? So the plant grows, and then it kind of unfurls, and then kind of drops. But it'll balance itself, because otherwise it wouldn't be able to stay upright, right? So say you have a stalk that goes... I need sticks for this one. I need sticks for this one. Say you have one stalk that started growing this way. You need another one growing this way. And in order... F they're connected at the bottom, right? So they have to kind of... There, in order, if, if one was like this and one was like that, like, how would that have happened? How would that have grown? You know, you might need another stalk over here somehow to balance it. It's a clump, so it just needs to be balanced in, in some way <laughs> for it to work. And it droops, right? I'll have to bring in some actual bamboo to demonstrate this better. Cantilevered. The word is cantilevered. Oof. That just means it's in balance. This has all been stalling. <laughs> so that I don't have to figure out where the next leaf should go. Make sure the brush is full of ink. I like to think, like, I like to draw imaginary strokes, right? This would be a good spot. You also, you can't really go wrong with doing the two-stroke, right? This is, like, so there's, like, you know, one stroke, then the two-stroke, then the, then one, two, three. Right? Things like that. Then... Right? So you kind of develop them. And then the way you do the cascading effect is... Like that, basically. You can keep going with ones. Right? You can keep going with twos. One, two, three. Keep going with trees. Etc. But I find that really, the more leaves per clump, but if you work on just doing two and layering two, then I feel like it's easier because you can make two look balanced and then figure out where the next two should be, etc. The battery on my camera is about to run out, so this might stop at any time. But I'm just going to keep going until that happens. Maybe that's a way that I can build up these large clumps. Just focus on sets of two. Hello again, friends. Oh, wow, good job. When last we spoke, I had 
just made a series of two strokes on this painting. And what I did was I turned those two, st I added a third stroke over here to each one of them. And then some of them I added a fourth stroke on this side. I also added a few clumps here and here. Up here, up here. And I think I'm pretty much done with it. Then, while I was loading the camera, I made a big spot here. So what I'm going to do is turn this into a young bamboo. <laughs> Why not? I made a bunch of nice dark ink. It kind of stands out. <laughs> But we'll see what, how it looks when it dries. Fin. This is how it looks from your, from your angle. <laughs>